In the past six years, I've lived and worked in countless cities around the world. With time, I found that it is actually much more rewarding not to work out of one spot, but to be able to hop around different places. This type of work style, living nomadically, and just being able to create value from your laptop is called being a digital nomad. In this video, I'm gonna go over the five places I've enjoyed living in the most and the places I'd recommend to my best friends. I'll talk about the pros and cons of each city and why some cities might appeal more to one person than another. This list isn't meant to go from worst to best. It's just meant to illustrate the differences between the different cities so that you can make the best decision for you. When we started, I lived in Providence, Rhode Island, right next to Boston. I lived there as a student at Brown University and Brown, I'd say to this day, is my favorite place I've ever been in in my life. It's so full of students, there's great food, you can be part of the meal plan and being part of the college environment, especially as a 22, 21 year old, is just incredible. So I actually convinced a couple of my professors to sponsor me to stay as a visiting scholar at Brown. So I still even had a student ID and a student email. At a certain point though, I started to outgrow the college environment and I wanted to learn more from people who were more mature than me. I ended up moving to San Francisco. San Francisco is fantastic because there's a lot of founders there. There's a lot of engineers there. There's a lot of investors there. It is a very vibrant city. When we were 25 people at Speechify, 18 of the folks at the company were either CTO, CEO, VP of engineering at the company they're at beforehand. So living in San Francisco and in Palo Alto made a lot of sense. So San Francisco would really appeal if you are in tech. Today, San Francisco has gone downhill significantly in my opinion. And so it used to be a really fantastic place. I think it will rise back up again, but it's been very challenged, especially during that pandemic when it became easy to move out of San Francisco, a lot of engineers decided to move out of San Francisco. After a bit of time in San Francisco though, I find that I love walking down the street, making eye contact with a stranger, smiling in their direction and having them smile back. I find that metropolitans are not ideal for this. Living in places that are a little bit more suburban feels better. And so Palo Alto for me, really was an incredible place. The weather is absolutely fantastic. There's so much space, there's so much green area, and you're very integrated into the Stanford University community. So I made a lot of friends who were based in Stanford. One thing I did when I lived in Palo Alto is I started doing dinners on my porch every weekend. I had a friend compile a list of the 50 most interesting people who are in our age range in Palo Alto. And I just sent everybody a group Facebook message. And some of my best friends that I had in Palo Alto were people who would come to these dinners. So city number four was LA. LA is a magical place. You can get caught up in a little bit of the fakeness of LA. I got really lucky because I had three really good friends who already lived in LA that introduced me into a really wonderful group of people. And I would say no matter where you live, the most important aspect is the people that you meet. And so in LA, for example, as an entrepreneur, there was a lot of e-commerce founders that I could learn how to buy digital ads from. There were many influencers that I could learn how to make content from, right? A big reason why I even make YouTube videos is because of friends of mine who are YouTubers who I met in LA. You get to live by the beach in Santa Monica in Venice. There's just so much nature, whether you go down to Joshua Tree, which is a beautiful desert nearby, or the mountains or the hills or, or the beaches, etc. Next, we move to Miami. Miami is exciting because it's a city with momentum. Miami is currently 35% overpopulated, and you can feel that in the roads, but you can also feel that in the air. People are excited to be here. There is this big movement of people in tech who are moving to Miami, and really in every single industry. Miami is like the capital of South America. It just happens to be based in the United States. Half the people in Miami speak Spanish as their first language. Again, beautiful beach, great people. A lot of people come here for tourism. So one thing that is true is I made more friends in LA by a lot. Same thing in San Francisco, but within the first three months of living in Miami, every single one of my best friends came to visit. Partway through the stay in Miami, we moved to London. And I would say London is actually my favorite city that I've lived in. London is like a launch pad to the rest of Europe. The underground system is amazing for helping you get around. Some people really, you know, are bummed by the rain. It doesn't impact me that much, but if you're really bummed by the rain and not having sun, it's not the most ideal place. The first time I lived in London, I've made a lot of friends while living there. It is a very cool diversity for me because people who are European or just international do think a little bit differently than Americans. There is a little bit more appreciation for what they have in life. I think Americans by and large actually tend to be very, take things for granted and end up really complaining about the US where in reality, it's an amazing place to live. And so seeing that gratitude, seeing the desire it is actually very, very uplifting. Now we're about to move for the first time to New York. So for the longest time, I did not want to live in New York. And the reason was that I've spent time in New York and people will not look you in the eye on the street because people don't trust you. But as I've gotten older, I've had more and more and more friends who moved to New York. And the way that it's been pitched to me, which is a very good pitch, is New York is like a giant college campus, especially if you have friends who live there. It's just a larger footprint area. There's amazing restaurants, amazing places to go out, and so many people who are excited. Now, people in New York, the first thing that they do more than anything else is work. And so during the week, there's very few people that you can hang out with, but after hours, in the weekends, it's a very happening place. And so I don't think New York is a place that I'm going to stay long-term, but I feel that my exploration of the world would not be complete without spending a significant or some significant time in New York. And my logic is when you are in your 20s, 
and you don't have a mortgage, you don't have kids, you have the freedom to go explore the world. When you do have those things, it makes it a lot more difficult. I don't believe that it makes sense to necessarily live in the town that you were born in just because you happen to be born in it. No, go explore the world, figure it out, and pick the place that you most resonate with that makes your soul sing. And so for me, I'm trying to experience fully all these different places so that when I do decide where to settle down, it is an educated choice. And I made it because I had the data, I had the experience, not just because I happen to have been bored in that place. And I think that this is one thing that I would love to impart to many, many other people, especially people who are American by birth and have lived in the same place all their life, is there's no reason why you should be stuck or stay in the one place that you were born. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't stay there because often that place feels like home, but do make sure to go explore the rest of the world and more than just vacation, go and live in a place for a month, two, three. Make friends, learn a language, see what the experience is like because it will enrich your life in a way that few other things can. What are great jobs that support remote work? Great question. So the first and easiest one is to be a software engineer. You can work on iOS development for iPhone apps, web development for websites, you can work on backend. Some people think that you need to have been a brilliant computer scientist from the time that you were seven years old and be like a math Olympiad to be a computer scientist. You don't, that's completely wrong. Number one, you can study computer science even if you did not do computer science ever before in your life. And you can get a job as a software engineer even without going to college. All you need to do is learn how to create value. And so there's great resources out there. It's hard, but if you have an affinity for it and you dedicate to it, it's an amazing career and it gives you a lot of freedom. Number two is graphic design or product design. Learning how to use Figma is incredibly easy. You can learn how to use Figma off of YouTube videos, off of Udemy videos, and it's so fun. That probably is the highest paid job that is remote that is the easiest to learn. And what I would recommend is start, if you wanna be a graphic designer or a product designer, copy the icons of the top 40 apps, copy the three main UX screens of the top 30, 40 apps or websites, and then boom, you have a portfolio. The next thing you can do is look at apps that you think are really good or websites that you think are really good. Message the CEOs of the companies and say, hey, I redesigned your app store screenshots. And here are the four or five screenshots that I recommend to use. And if you build really good ones, they'll just hire you because it's rare to find really exceptional graphic designers, but you can become one pretty easily if you just practice. The next one is being a copywriter. If you're a really good writer, you can do that from anywhere in the world. And so just invest the time learning, working, building a portfolio. And if you do that, you can work from anywhere in the world. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to share it with a friend who you think might be interested in remote work. Leave a comment, leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And with that, happy listening.